In my previous video, I talked about how I grew to love my Remarkable 2 tablet and how it helped me to organize my notes and keep them in one place. Despite having very low expectations, it became my daily driver. So when the Remarkable Paper Pro got announced, I got pretty stoked because it had, at least on paper, everything we asked for. But there's something that went wrong along the way. Of course, there was an influx of hyped up reviews saying that this is another must have for any creator, writer or illustrator out there and that you can't live without it. And it's a massive upgrade from Remarkable 2. And then obviously that hype died down and other reviewers jumped on both tablets and looked at them a little bit more objectively because it's not exactly an upgrade to RM2, which I'll explain in a second. Just as with Remarkable 2, the Pro is on the steeper side when it comes to pricing. When you add the portfolio and a better marker, you're kind of attaching upon the iPad Pro territory. Maybe not the newest one, which is about, what, $1,000. This one still works out at £250 less than an iPad Pro. Advice that it's much superior to whatever we're getting in a remarkable package. And I know, apples and oranges, two different devices, and I mentioned that in a previous video, that I've always found iPads not really that good for note taking because there were just too many distractions available to you. And with my ADHD, everything is distracting to me. However, since the Remarkable Pro is being advertised as a device that should be used by artists as well, I think that's a fair comparison. Because let's face it, if you're spending that much money on something that you will use for sketching, for projects, for design, ideally you want some app integration, which this thing still doesn't have. And I've got zero talent when it comes to sketching, drawing, anything beyond kind of a primary school level. But I've asked a couple of my friends who are professional illustrators and graphic designers to see if Remarkable Pro would be something they would use as part of their daily drivers and none of them was actually particularly impressed with it apart from the fact that it is a really good e-ink device but i wouldn't go as far as claiming that this is something that you would use for your designs now i touched upon lack of integration in apps and this was one of the big asks i think from the whole community is to at least at least have some kind of an ebook integration here like the amazon kindle app Uploading books that you downloaded off the internet isn't really the way I really want to do things and also it's a major pain in the ass. Being able to sync your library from other ebook providers would be a godsend and sadly that's not included and I don't think, at least from looking at the updates, that we'll see that anytime soon. There's also no live editing of your notes on a computer and on the Remarkable itself. Whenever you make an edit, just like with the Remarkable 2, you still create a copy of that file, which you can edit again on your computer and on your tablet, but it's not live editing. Looking for Reddit and YouTube, I found that there's some people claiming that there's a big difference in responsiveness between these two devices. I don't really see that in real life. I mean, they're both responsive enough for the tasks I'm using them for, which is basically <laughs> taking notes and highlighting the articles I'm working on. So here's an example of an article on resilience that I highlighted in a few different places and I've marked up in a few different places as well. As you can see, the experience is very similar flipping through these. However, I do really like the fact that you can use a color that is a color, not just a different shade of gray. The backlight that we asked for, um, it isn't exactly what I think most of us wanted because if you put these side by side, you can tell that the Remarkable, the RM2, is much wider than its counterpart. And even at full brightness, the Remarkable Pro feels a little bit yellowish, gray, yellowish, bluish in comparison to the original RM2. And even if you look at the black, it's not really black on the RM Pro, it's more of a bluish color. And that might be down to the fact that this backlight not only is not adjustable beyond certain level, which you can see here, it's not really that mega bright, but also you can't change the hue of it, which is coming out at slightly bluish. It's like a really, really cold light. So that's probably what's causing that blue effect on the black writing. In terms of battery, there's not much improvement between the Pro and the RM2. It has a bigger battery because it is a bit of a chunkier device, which I'll discuss in a second. And despite having the bigger battery, it has to power up a bigger screen and also, I'm guessing the color side of things is taking a lot of that drain on. 
So I still need to charge it once a week. It's not a biggie. They still survive a weekly working sessions with me. It's just something to point out that bigger battery on specs doesn't really mean that you'll get more usability out of this. When it comes to the feeling of the device itself, you've probably watched other reviews mentioning that, but the Remarkable Pro feels more gritty. It feels more like using a pencil on a paper rather than having a ball pen on the RM2. Now, whether you prefer one or the other is totally personal choice. I do like the, how the RM2 feels when you're writing on it. But that might be down to the fact that I've been using it for over a year now and it just feels more at home. Also, as a side note for note staking, there's still no auto rotate, so you still need to go into settings and rotate the whole thing from horizontal to portrait or other way around. When it comes to pens, that was a big change and I'm not a big fan of the new pens. And I know that sounds like a negative Nelly here, but they moved on from the previous stylus to an active stylus, which means that all your old pens are not gonna be working with the Remarkable Pro and also there's no third party solution. So you're stuck with the RM original pens, which are super expensive for what they are. In my previous video, I said that I lost this marker to on a camping trip. I've replaced it for 39 bucks of Amazon with a Stedler, which worked perfectly. Then we found it in one of the cavities in our camper van, which is great. But if I would have lost this one and I would have to shell out, what is it, over 130 bucks on the new pen, I would be pretty pissed off. So sadly, if you lose this guy here, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive for you to replace it. One thing to mention that because this is an active pen, you have to keep it on the pad to charge it up. So don't leave it lying around because you might come back to a dead pen. Whatever you've been told in the past, size matters. There is a fairly significant difference in size between the RM2 and RM Pro. It doesn't seem like it when you look at the specs because it's only a couple of centimeters here and there, same with the thickness, but it is a significant difference enough when you're traveling and if you need a compact device to take notes on. For people who sketch a lot, I'm guessing that extra screen estate is coming handy, but for majority of my users, I just found this to be a little bit too cumbersome. This is the size of an iPad Pro and um, I didn't choose an iPad Pro for a reason because I need something that's portable that I can use on meetings and I'm whipping it out when I'm taking notes, it looks like I'm actually taking notes, not playing games on another electronic device. It is totally up to you how you're using your things and what matters to you the most. But I just find that the form factor of the RM2 works slightly better than the big chunky one of the RM Pro. Like with most of my videos, this one is also unsponsored, but I did include a couple of affiliate links below if you want to buy one or another or something else of the list, it will help the channel to survive. Just as well as dropping a like and a subscribe, that also helps me to make more of these videos happen. Now you've got to ask yourself a question, who is this thing for? Because if you already have the RM2 and your main use case is taking notes, I would say just stick to what you have because there's not that many new things in the RM Pro that would justify the spend. If you're new to e-ink tablets, <laughs> Again, I'm not 100% sure if dropping close to 750 is worth to take a dive as your first e-ink device. It might be worth looking at the marketplace for a used Remarkable 2 because there's a lot of people who bought these and they never found a real use for them, which is still a pretty big group. To me, this is a distraction-free note-taking tool, a replacement for paper and nothing else. I do absolutely love the fact that this is color and I can highlight my articles in the different colors, but in the same time, it feels a little bit too cumberstone to carry around with me as much as I do with the Remarkable 2. And by the way, disregard that black little dot on the side of the screen that no idea how that happened. I'm waiting for the Remarkable team to have a look and support. If there's something weird happening, I'll pin a comment to the top of the section just to update you on the situation. I guess if you do a lot of doodling, the Remarkable Pro might be a better choice for you. But as I said, you're kind of uh, encroaching onto the iPad Pro territory. So if you're doing a lot of graphic design or you draw a lot, that might be a little bit better choice unless you want a device that doesn't give you 
any option to distract yourself from the task at hand, then I highly recommend either or of these ones. For my personal choice, I'd probably stick to RM2, but the RM Pro has definitely some things that would pull me over. If they only would have created an RM2 factor pad with the RM Pro features, I'll be absolutely sold on it. And as always, if you have any questions about either of these, drop them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Have a great day.